It seems as though in the latest episode of The Mandalorian Season 3, Chapter 21 by Peter Ramsey, the armorer finally had a wake-up call. The realization that it's not enough for the tribe to walk the way, in such small numbers, and what is the best option, uniting Mandalore. I think between the time that she expelled Din from the tribe in the Book of Boba Fett, to the time he atoned in the mines, and witnessing that Bo-Katan can be a force for good, the armor has had a lot of time to think, if the ways of Mandalore are to survive, she's got to open that up to other Mandos, and that's what the significance of the last episode was. She told Bo-Katan to remove her helmet. She realized, Bo-Katan walks both paths. Bo has experienced life as a Mandalorian without the tribe, and with it, both casual and strict orthodox Mandalorian philosophies. She is the one who needs to rise to the position of leadership once again, recruit other Mandalorians, and unites the homeworld, and a big part of the armor putting trust in her is acknowledging that Bo-Katan is telling the truth, that she did see a mythosaur in the mines. And another reason the armor put so much trust in her is that Bo-Katan saved a foundling, an act of the highest honor. I also think that the armor returning to Navarro and seeing her old forge reminded her their strength is in their numbers, not in their secrecy. They've lost so many along the way. Seeing the old forge destroyed, remembering what happened in season one, was a turning point for a character. I think she too is going to remove her helmet eventually. It's a small step and symbolic that the old ways need to change, at least to an extent. They're probably still going to keep their orthodoxy, but the mythos all signifies a new era. This is the time for change, time to put aside their differences and focus on their common goals, and to do that, they need their homeworld back. And for all Mandalorians of all clans and creeds to come together. I think the show The Mandalorian is not just in reference to Din or Bo, or even Grogu, it's about all the people of Mandalore. The Mandalorian is plural. Another big reason that scene was so important is that after having spent half of the season without direction in terms of the tribe and their goal, we now know what it is, and Bo-Katan, as the rumor stated, is going to be Mandalore by the end. They're trying to rebuild their culture, which is not an easy task, but they need to let go of their cultishness, and as I say, I think the armor might remove a helmet, and it should be said the catalyst for this to happen is not Bo, it's Din Djarin. He's removed his helmet many times in the past, and I've gotta say despite the atonement, one of my biggest gripes with season 3 so far is they're leaning in on Mando returning to his cultishness, and I don't see that as the natural progression for his character, that's just my opinion though, unless, as I suspect, there is a twist coming, a change for the entire tribe, and I think Din needs to be the one who puts his foot down and says, you know what, I'm not going back to this. I don't like that he's gone back to his old ways. I was hoping for character development beyond that, but now that Bo-Katan's done it and has been allowed to remove her helmet, there is a shift, and with Din Djarin getting closer to her, that moment is coming. He might remove it again, and this time for good. Fingers crossed, I really hope so. And if he does it, as well as Bo and other Mandalorians, maybe Paz Fisla, it could show the armorer, you can still follow the way and be a true Mando, but you've got to have an evolution in your beliefs. For all of Mandalore to come together, the tribe, which is the most extreme faction, need to soften up to be more appealing to the other Mandalorian clans. And one of the biggest challenges that Bo-Katan faces is that there are some very hostile Mandalorians out there too, ones working for the Imperial remnants like Moff Gideon, the ones that broke him out of prison. If they find out Bo-Katan's out there recruiting Mandalorians, they might decide to track her down and capture her. As we saw in chapter 11 of season 2, the children of the Watch have a very bad reputation. They're seen as ultra-orthodox, over the top, and very rigidly stubborn in their beliefs, which is true. And that's why the armorer slowly changing her ways was so massive. I would love to see a face reveal of Emily Swallow's the armorer. Is she going to be just Emily Swallow beneath, or is she going to be a Zabrak? Maybe another species? I know one of the most popular theories is that she's Rook Cast, a human female who was a more loyalist. Now we do see Maul's face inside the water waters of the Armourer's Forge in Episode 3's recap. This, on top of the fact she has horns on her helmet, has led many fans to believe that she did serve Maul once upon a time. Because Maul at this stage is dead, imagine if we get a flashback where we see the Armourer serving him. And something really awesome which one fan pointed out is that this season is heavily inspired by the Phantom Menace. Between the N1 Starfighter, the Naboo security forces in the Order 66 flashback, Ahmed Best character Kellerin Beck, and the fact that in some ways, Palpatine's life essence, which is going to go into a clone sometime soon, is the Phantom Menace. Once again, the threat is off screen. We've yet to see Moff Gideon again, but he's escaped prison. And despite hints at the Mandalorian stuff relating to Moff Gideon's escape, we still have to remember he is still trying to bring Palpatine back through cloning. Whether it's Snoke or a proto Snoke, the right of the First Order later in the timeline has already begun. Palpatine in the Shadows is the Phantom Menace. 
So in a pretty important way, this season is forcing us to think of the Phantom Menace. Could we see Maul in a flashback and a younger version of the Armourer? I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I know a lot of fans want to see young Bo-Katan and Satine in a flashback, but for me, the Armourer's backstory is fascinating, simply because despite fan theories and speculation, we know absolutely nothing, but in the last couple of episodes, I really hope we get something to do with her. Now, Bo-Katan, in her quest, has her work cut out for her. She'll probably go to the Wrens, get Koskaris and Axe Woves, Fen Rao, and whoever else is out there, but since the Night of a Thousand Tears, Mandalorians are scattered like stars in the galaxy. And even when she finds them, a lot of Mandos resent her after she lost the Darksaber and Mandalore fell, but not to mention, imagine their reaction when she tells them she joined the tribe. All I'm saying is, it's going to take a lot. There is quite a bit of bad blood, but I reckon the biggest moment is when she's going to prove and ride to the Mythosaur, that's when they're all going to bow down. As many of us predicted before Season 3, something much more important than the Darksaber is going to come up. Bo-Katan may have failed in the past, but her natural abilities, as displayed in the last episode as well, are undeniable, and the armor sees that. The armor does more than show respect for Bo-Katan despite everything they've been through. The two of them probably knew each other once upon a time. Some even think the armor might be one of Bo-Katan's long-lost sisters, maybe even the true mother of Corky. The armor parades Bo-Katan in front of the other children of the Watch, and Bo doesn't have a helmet, but in doing so, the armor sends a clear message to her followers. They must accept change, and the help of other people who are not so strict about the creed. The armor recognizes for the first time that Mandalorians outside of the Covert are true Mandos as well, something she's forced to accept. It was a very unexpected development, but one of the reasons Katie Sackhoff called this episode her favorite. They're setting up the tribe eventually not being so isolationist from the other Mandos, and for the very first time, we're really starting to trust the armorer. She might have had a dark past, but despite that, she's doing the right thing and uniting the Mandalorians through Bo-Katan. If it's true that the armorer once served Maul, a flashback or reference could be made, and a great purpose of this could show the contrast in mindset of Bo-Katan back then to now. Bo did not accept that Maul, an outsider, could rule Mandalore at the time, and in a poetic way, the armorer was just as gatekeeping in terms of who could be a true Mando or not, until now. She blamed Bo-Katan and House Kreese for the fall of Mandalore, but in Season 3, both have worked through their differences, and after Bo rescued Din in the mines and then Ragnar, she's proved her value as a leader. Time to reclaim Mandalore. But what do you guys think? Do you think the armor is going to remove her helmet? Do you think Din will once again? And what are your theories as to the identity of the mysterious armorer? Share those and all your thoughts on today's video in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the force be with you, always.